Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Kevin. This is episode two of Argument Parsing in Rust. Last time we talked a little bit about what CLAP was, why you'd use it. Uh, this time we're going to talk about metadata and your application. So I'm sorry we're not f still not to the actual arguments and the fun stuff, but this is all good stuff for your applications. So the first thing we're going to we're going to pick up right where we left off. In fact, oh, I apologize for that. Um, we still have our fake our fake binary. Oh, let's clean this. Actually, we're not going to clean it because that would take longer to build. Let's try this again. There we go. All righty. So you can see we still just have clap as a dependency. We're only using the abstract right now. And we're going to add some metadata to this. So if we go back up, you've seen the repository. If we use the new docs.rs website and we go to Clap, you'll see all of the generated documentation. This first part is really just a repeat of the readme. So we can skip all of that. And we go down to the abstract. Now, usually when I'm reading any documentation, the very first thing I do is collapse it all down so I can see the methods. If you want to see an explanation of what the abstract is, how to use it. It's all there. Now, if we look, there's quite a bit, there's quite a few methods. Uh, some of these have to do with some things that we're not going to talk about in this video. We will get to in future videos. So the first things that we're concerned with is things like the author, about, uh, before and after help, the version, usage, things of that nature, things that are metadata about your application. So let's just go down the list and start talking about it. Um, we've got our author here, and this sets a string to be used as the author in your help message. Now, it doesn't, I know it says author singular, um, but it's just a string. It could be literally whatever you wanted it to be. So we're going to add that here. And so that I'm not having to tab so far over, we're just going to use one tab. Okay, there we go. So we now have an author. There is something we can do where we can pull the author's array out of our cargo.toml, which is awesome because we may, you know, that may change from time to time. And me personally, I don't like having to go back and re update all these things all the time. Uh, now, the authors may not change that frequently, but still, it's something that we can do automatically. The way we would do that is there's a few macros defined by clap. So we can do macro use. If we go back down into the documentation, let's go back one level. You should see under the macros, there is a create authors macro. Now, if we check this, all we have to do literally is copy this line right here. So instead of Kevin K, we're going to use create authors. Now, if we build and run this really quickly, actually, you know what? I apologize. Let's talk about this new right here, this name, first and foremost. I got a little ahead of myself with the documentation. Uh, the name that's provided right here into new can either be the same as your binary or it can be different. It's the thing that's displayed at the very top of your help message. So for example, I'm very used to hitting F12 and I'm trying to use this one down here for you guys. So when we run our it's the very first thing that's right here. It can be the same as your binary, or it can be different. I'm going to open up a new tab so I can scroll back and forth between them. So here we have it matching. Fake is our binary, and fake is also our application name. We could change this to something like you know, my awesome fake application. 
Now, why would you want to do something like that? Uh, if you want your help message to be displayed a little bit differently. The warning is just saying we're not using our matches struct. That's fine. We can also throw that away with an underscore. Um, but for right now, this is fine. You can see now my fake awesome or my awesome fake application. And it's also pulled in uh, from our cargo.toml. It's pulled in the author with that back row. So two for one in this one. Um, some people like to use the binary name. Some people like to use, uh, you know, a totally different name for the help message. Totally up to you guys which, uh, which one you use. So beyond the author, the next thing down the line was, I believe, go back to structs. Beyond the author, bin name is a special one. So we're going to come back to that one. Now we have the about. The about is the string that's going to appear right below, right below your authors. So, you know, usually just short, short blurb. This is what my application does. This is how you use it, blah, blah, blah. Now, these can be in any order. We don't have to do them in uh, documentation order. Uh, this just happens to be the order we're doing them in. Let's rerun this real quick. You can see now it says it does awesome fake things. All right, the very next thing we're going to look at is after help and before help. These are half special, half not. What they do is exactly what they say. They write something either before the help message or directly after the help message. A lot of people use these for things like uh, copyright notices. Um, the after help is a lot of times used for additional information about the arguments because sometimes your argument string, you don't want it to be too long. Now, clap will wrap it appropriately, um, but you still don't want it to be too long. Um, so a lot of times they'll put additional information down at the bottom. Let's do something really quickly in the before help and after help just as a quick demo. I don't know why I use so many exclamation points. Whoop. And here we have something before, something after. Not too interesting, but it does come in very handy. All right, now moving on down, our version. This is a pretty important one. Obviously, it could be something like v2.1, v1.2. I usually put it up at the top, just out of habit because it's usually something you'll include even if you don't include the other stuff about after help, you know, things like that. Uh, so the version could just be a string. And now this is literally anything you want. It doesn't have to be numbers. It doesn't have to be any format, nothing like that. I could put ABC123 if I wanted to. Now something to note, it will not put the V before this. So if you want that V, you do V1.2 or something along those lines. This will place this up at the top. You can see v1.2. Like our crate authors, there's also a macro for that. We have crate version, and it'll pull the version out of our cargo.toml. Again, to use the macros inside of here, we have to put macro use before the extern crate. And let's see what that did. And here we have 0 0.1.0, .0, which is exactly what's in our cargo.toml. Here you see 0, 0.1.0. 0. We can also combine these two and put a string, you know, make a format string, things of that nature. Uh, that would work just as well. 
Next, we have our usage. Usage is one of those, it's also somewhat of a special one. What it does is it overrides the usage string that's provided by clap. Now, clap does something special with its usage strings. It automatically parses your arguments, puts the required ones into the usage string, and then it also does some neat things on errors. Um, you're going to see this later in some later videos where if the user was trying to use an argument, let's just say arbitrarily dash A, and then that argument requires something that the user forgot to put, Clap will generate a usage string error and say, sorry, there was an error here. You forgot to put something. This is what you probably should have done in order to, or this is what you could have done to correct that. And it'll throw a new usage string out there, completely custom designed, that says, you know, dash A, dash whatever, whatever the user was trying to use. Um, I call those sort of smart usage strings or context sensitive usage strings. So uh, if you use this dot usage, it totally overrides that feature. You no longer get the smart or context sensitive usage strings. You only get the one that you'd provide here. So I recommend not using this unless you really want to use this, unless you don't care about context sensitive um, usage strings. For example, I just copied it, but if we put, well, actually, let me show you real quick. The usage string that it provides is nothing because we don't actually have any arguments in there. But we can put a usage string in there. You know, we could even make it multiple lines too. And I believe it's just one tab, so. Let's try and compile that real quick. Oh, that's right, we're using four spaces, not tabs. just so it aligns. All right, so we can have multiple usage strings. The problem is, again, whenever there's an error, it's only gonna print out what you put here. It's no longer gonna be that context sensitive one. So it's absolutely up to you um, which one you use. There's use cases, use cases for both. It's just something to be aware of when you're using it. Templating is something special. And it looks like that is about it for our, for our metadata. Now this metadata can all be applied to subcommands. Every single thing we've set here can be set on a subcommand um, because subcommands are pretty much just sub applications. We're gonna go ahead and end this video here and then we'll come back in the next video. We'll have sort of a short video because only a few things to cover and we're gonna cover those special items, the bin name and the templating because those take a minute. We're also gonna cover the help and version shorts um, because those sort of go in the, uh, in the metadata version. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Come back next time. Thanks.